Hi, welcome to another episode of the show, All Day Edify. We're your hosts. I'm Corey, and this is my lovely wife, Tasha. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us on today. So we're still in our series of Mindset Change for Men, where we're focusing on our men and growth development. And so today's show, what we're going to be talking about is building bridges without boundaries. So we're talking about building bridges without boundaries. And so as we were talking and we were discussing um, this actual topic, there mm -hmm. were some statistics that we decided to show you guys that we felt that would be actually ideal for this particular show. Absolutely. Uh, what we actually found is that in a study titled What Unites and Divides Urban, Suburban and Rural Communities, among the top six common problems that each of these demographics faced were poverty, access to public transportation, availability of affordable jobs, availability of affordable housing. And the number one item that was consistent in urban, suburban, and rural communities was actually drug addiction, drug addiction. And if you can see there, it shows that um, you see those numbers. Well, each number represents a percentage out of 100 of people in that community who took the survey. And so this is actually a time frame of like a year and a half before the, the pandemic took place. So it's not that long ago. OK. And so, again, this was less than two years ago. And this is some wow. This is some really impactful information that causes you to look at things like, wow. So that's really really amazing when you think about it because that's all three shared demographics that's the yes. urban suburban and the rural communities absolutely and so what we're actually saying is that in reality there is no room for us to draw you know um kind of like criticism uh one community versus another or anything like that what we actually should take away from this is that in our suburban rural and urban communities this shows that we actually have more in common. We have more similarities than we do differences. And what it actually takes is for us to have unified and be unified by leadership. People who are leaders who understand how to bridge and connect those gaps that make us think that we are more different than we are similar. Wow, I agree. I agree with that. And so today, that leads us to today's guest, who is a man who has bridged communities. Um, he's built communities from the ground up and he has uprooted from one community to another for the purpose of building people. And so today, yes. as a guest on our show, we have Dr. Frank Gilliard with us on today. Dr. Gilliard, how are you doing today? Um, I'm well, thank you. And uh, I want to say thank you for inviting me to your show today. Uh, I am I'm very proud to be here with you. Good, good. Well, Dr. Gilliard, we want to give you this space here as we open up our interview and invite you into um, becoming familiar with our viewers. Please um, just spend a moment, you know, introducing yourself and kind of describing yourself. Thank you. Um, I'm here in Flint since 2008. Prior to coming to Flint, uh, I was in Newark, New Jersey. I led a church there. Um, but I also was involved in community development. Uh, one of the things that struck me when I came to uh, Newark as a pastor was the blight that they were suffering. And uh, I know that you all are familiar, if you, you know history, you're familiar with the riots of 1968 uh, that tore the city of uh, Newark apart and probably many other cities because uh, that riot occurred as a result of uh, the execution of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, when I arrived in Flint, I mean, in uh, Newark in 2000, what was it, 1990, 1996, the city was still very messed up. And um, so we went to work to rebuild the community around our church. Um, the community existed of maybe six properties on that whole block. And mm -hmm. then uh, the city wasn't taking care of the vacant lot. So we had, you know, high weeds and much like what we see 
in the city of Flint today with the vacant mm -hmm. lots. Uh, and we also had a, a very bad rodent problem. So the wow. um, what we did was we formed a, a nonprofit community development organization that focused on rebuilding the houses in those blighted areas. Mm -hmm. um, and we started in 96. We also culminated with our building projects in 2005. And by that period, we had uh, rebuilt several blocks and uh, we had populated the city with uh, 300 new units of affordable housing. Wow. Um, and what we were looking to do at, in, at that time was to give homeowners, new homeowners, the opportunity also to be um, landlords because we were building two family units and the person who bought that two family unit would also have the opportunity to rent the second unit. They live in the first unit, rent the second unit. And uh, the template that we had put together would uh, give them the opportunity actually to save a, a gr great deal of money at the end of a 10 year period. Um, I won't go into how that formula was set up, but if they had followed the template, uh, that particular homeowner by the end of the 10th year would have had uh, uh, close to $500,000 in the bank. Uh, and uh, they would have been a worth had a net worth of about five hundred thousand dollars if they had followed oh. that template. It, it was it re, it did require some discipline in yeah. spending, uh, and uh, but I don't know if any of those residents or uh, owners ever got to achieve that goal. But that was mm. uh, the re, the goal that we put out there for them to uh, follow. Gotcha. So very good points that you bring out, because I can say that I have uh, put eyes on this development that you launched uh, in Newark, New Jersey, having been there and uh, having seen uh, the, the building and seen the, the properties that are surrounding the community that you're talking about. And I think what's lost in that is, if you could expound on it a little bit, um, Dr. Gilliard, is the fact that by trade, uh, you are a person who is committed to building and developing, um, and you have some experience in that area as well. And aside from that, you are a community leader, and as a shepherd and a leader of people, you combine those two things, and you decided that you were going to uplift that community and the people around them using the some of the specific um, experiences that you had. And as a result, everyone around you in that community benefited from it. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, one of the things that, that we did was um, we went on and got the training. We went through the New Jersey Affordable Housing Network and got the training uh, of how to put together development projects for a uh, nonprofit development project for um, low income residents and many of the people that we sold homes to uh they had never owned a house before this was the first mm -hmm. time that they uh, were able to own property and uh, without the program that was put out there uh, many of them would never have been homeowners now we also uh looked to do some work in terms of people building mm -hmm. um one of the things that i focused on when i came to flint was working with uh, families and working with, with men and working with children. You know, um, one of the things that I, that I found out when I did the project in Newark was that you can put up new buildings, you can put up new houses, but if you don't put the work in to help the people uh, uh, change their mindset, you know, yes. you're putting people in new homes with the same mind frame of mind and the mindset that they had when they were living in other areas and in, in other conditions. So it, it's important to work hard to change the mindset of the people um, in the inner city or in, in, in a, any area uh, where they are, uh, are struggling and trying to uh, achieve another level of life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So one of the things that we showed um, before we introduced you and brought you in is if we could pull that uh, that data up again, one of the things that we talked about is how there are so many similarities 
that exist between the three communities, the urban community, the suburban community, as well as the rural community. And so based on these different things, um, our topic being building bridges without boundaries, you have some experiences that make you a great candidate. And one of the things I love about Dr. Gilliard is his humility and his focus on just looking at what needs to be done and then taking steps to developmentally get to that place. And so we said that we believe that there is a need for leaders who are able to help people to see that, hey, look, we got more in common than we do and more similarities than we do differences. What do you think stands out to you in terms of the main um, pre preventive thing that stops people from developing this thought process? Now, we have a lot in common with our counterparts in different communities versus saying that we are so different or not alike. Well, uh, Pastor, I think that one of the things uh, that work against us is the... Um, the media, and and you know, all media is not bad. It's not bad, and uh, so there are some good. There's some good out there uh, that's being put into the heads of people, but there's also a lot of um, division that's being sown into the hearts of people. And I think that the thing that keeps us separated is that we don't really talk to one another. We don't really uh, social associate with one another. And I think that we did more talking, uh, leaders and people in these uh, diverse communities, if we began to do more talking, we would find out that there is a lot that we have in common. And there are a lot of things that we are fighting in our separate communities uh, that if we would just work together uh, instead of uh, being, uh, you know, lone rangers in our own particular community, if we would just combine our efforts and energy um, to address this problem as a whole social problem and not just a uh, diverse, separate kind of problem that exists only in certain areas, we could get much more accomplished. And, I, and I, again, I think that because of what we have been shown and what we have seen, uh, it gets to the point where we don't believe that these same problems exist in other areas, whereas they really do. And, and that brings us to that discussion as you, you know, talk about that is, you know, why do you believe that people in these different settings, the urban, suburban, and rural areas are reluctant to partner in discussing solutions to mutual problems? You know, I, I believe that uh, we get the, we get, we have the idea that if I help, if we help one group or one, another community, that it will take away from what we're getting and what was available to us. Um, there's this just this competition that's been breathed into us um, and that uh, we get to the point where we don't want to see anyone else get because we believe that they're getting attention or they're getting um, the resources mean that those resources will be taken from us. Uh, and that's not the case at all. Uh, but there again, you know, it's just the misinformation that's being put out there. Um, and uh, until we do come together and begin to talk with one another, uh, you know, we will always have that that wall between us. And uh, and I'm I hope and I really, um, you know, expect that there will be some way uh, that we will begin to talk to one another and and we will decide that this problem is greater than, you know, us individually, but if we will come together, uh, our combined, our combined numbers, our combined energy, our combined mindset will help us uh, to overcome the barriers that are in our own communities. I, I just believe that that's what needs to happen. Absolutely. And, 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 and that is a and that is a growth mindset approach that you are discussing here. We've been talking about uh, having a growth mindset that believes that opportunities can arise out of difficult, challenging situations. Um, another question for you, Dr. Gilliard. Uh, I know and in, in our focus in this series is helping to encourage men to see opportunities for mindset change. 
So my question for you is, why does providing um, an opportunity for mindset um, and supporting uh, men in the community, why does this mean so much to you? And providing an opportunity for a mindset change and supporting men in the community who actually want to take part of that kind of a mindset change. Well, you know, you look at you look at our uh, the, the uh, communities that we're speaking about. Um, as well, look at rural and look at urban communities, and and even and even suburban communities. What we'll find is that uh, you know there's a there is has been and still continues to be. Um, you know, the uh, uh, separating of families, you know, the division of families, uh, divorces, uh, taking husbands out of the, the uh, out of the family, out of the, out of the lives of the children uh, and single mothers having now to try to uh, manage the rearing of the children and uh, taking care of the needs of the home. You know, one thing that was said, uh, by uh, one of the authors of the uh, early 20th century, uh, her name was Ellen Glasgow, is that all change is not growth as all movement is not forward. You know, wow. everything, all the changes that we see, it's not growth. Um, and what we have to do is we have to begin to understand that the, the, the changes that we've seen in the home, uh, the separation of the two uh you know parents that has been a that has had a devastating impact on community it's hard to have a solid community when you you are having homes in that community that are experiencing you know the the, the devastation of divorce and uh, and in some of the cases where young men are having children but they've never been taught how to be head of households. They've never been taught the need or the uh, are given the idea that they are responsible for uh, not only the child, but also they are responsible for the uh, uh, the bond and the union between themselves and that woman that uh, had this child with them, which really the only way to have a good communication and a good uh, bond is through, is through marriage. And, you know, it doesn't matter what faith you come from, uh, anything else. But if you don't have that bond of marriage that's holding that family together, um, then that child does not have a stable home that they can grow up in. So you, you, the, the, what's happening in our community is just an outgrowth. It, it's the consequence of broken homes, broken relationships, um, and no matter where you are, no matter how much money you have, uh, no matter what position you hold, if that is the case, your home is going to suffer, your children are going to suffer, and your community is going to suffer. Wow, that's that's, that's really that's really great. And it's it's like this is such good information to where, you know, this series, you know, the growth mindset for the men is just really, really good and you can expound so much. And so Dr. Gilliard, so today in 2021, what does the growth mindset look like for someone like yourself who is community minded and determined to build bridges without boundaries? Um, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. I was, um, I was doing some research. One of the things that uh, has troubled me is that when we when we when we get leadership in our community you know we we're, we're we're all finite so we don't live and we are not here forever you know tragedy strikes and when we build our our uh our leadership our community uh structure on individuals you know on on that one person that's the central node of that uh, of that particular group then if that person is no longer at the center of that group, then that group um, no longer has the, the same impact that it has. There's a, there is a um, presentation 
uh, called Key to Understand Communities, The Central Lies to Distributed Spectrum. That's that's mm -hmm. the name of it. And they, they show three models of community. One is called centralized model. Uh, the other is decentralized model. And the other and the third is distributed model. And I'm going to just go uh, try to go quickly. But the um, centralized model is the model that that goes on that uh, is built on relationships and power that flows through a central node in ODE, which is to be organized, which is to be an organization or an individual. So Martin Luther King and the civil rights movements, let's use that as an example. So Martin Luther King was that centralized figure, that, that, that node that the movement was built around. And so when his assassination took place, as you could see from history, the, the movement really lost a lot. Um, one of the things that was good was that it did have some, some uh, attachments. There were some other community attachments to that centralized uh, organization, but they did not have the, the, the same thrust once the centralized power figure was gone. And when we're trying to develop now a new structure that's going to deal with community, deal with change. You know, it's not ideal that we build it around one individual. That decentralized uh, figure, that uh, structure, it it was is still uh, using the central personnel, but it's in different groups around the oh. around that you know around that thought. Okay, um, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So gotcha. if they lose some power once the, the centralized figure is gone. And then, but the main thing that I like about the uh, last one, which is uh, the distributed communities, is that we, we have the idea or uh, the, the goal that we're trying to work with and, and we get all the groups to focus on that goal and so you know you're not building around individuals. You're building around a um, you're building around an idea. You're building around right. a goal. You know, um, and so if we put it out there that we're trying to change our communities, trying to change uh, drug the drug situation, trying to change uh, the crime situation, and we're all working together, no matter where that where our communities are, then uh, it won't. It cannot be hurt. The movement cannot be destroyed if one or two individuals get knocked off or, or move on because it's a movement that's not based on people, it's a uh, personnel, it's a movement that's based on uh, a goal, a common goal. And uh, so the whole idea is to get the people in these communities invested together in working towards the, um, the correction of those ills in the community. And that becomes the goal that everyone is working on. It's a societal movement is what we're talking about. And, 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 and what we're looking at today, I believe that it is going to require a societal movement where there's no one group that's working towards uh, correcting the situation, but it is all of us working in uh, you know, in, 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 in union, in unity to correct the situation that is going to impact everyone, no matter where you live. Um, and Absolutely. that's part that you showed us. Uh, it tells us that our problems are not in any one place, but our problem is statewide is, you know, is countrywide. And, uh, that's, that's what we have to really come to grips with. Yep. Yep. I agree. I agree 100%. And, and I think that uh, and, and I think that the, the one thing that stands out to me, uh, aside from the fact that um, there's just such a wealth of wisdom and, and to be gleaned from. And, and I know in the discussions that I've had with you, Dr. Gilliard, that um, that there's a lot that, you know, based on experiences, based on uh, having a outlook that is all encompassing concerning the community um, is that 
there's a lot to be discussed. And I think that this really opens the door for us. We won't have to do a follow-up interview with you, uh, Dr. Yes. Gary. So we're going to have to set up to be able to really have some time to just take some more nuggets from you in the near future. I mean, the I very near be, future. I would, be, I would be glad to, uh, you know, to spend time because I, I really appreciate what you, what you're doing, you know, and it's programs like this, that's going to have the, uh, make the difference. And, uh, you know, it's going to have a great impact because it, it, you know, I'm, I'm praying that it will bring the minds of the people together and get us to see that, uh, you know, we have more, as you say, in common than we have, uh, apart. Absolutely. So, can I ask you one more question before we leave, Dr. Gilliard? Yeah. And I need you to give me the 30, 45 second um, response. Um, how do you uh, or would you go about encouraging men who are yeah. husbands or single, fathers and heads of household within the community to change their approach to implementing community changes? How would you, uh, you know, go about encouraging men of all walks who are committed to the community or maybe not committed today, but taking a mindset change to help be able to support community initiatives? I believe that the women have held the, you know, they have held this uh, thing together and the man are together for so long. If the men would just come back and take part in the fight, that's, this is what I'm saying. If, if we would just take part and do our part in the fight to save our uh, our society, I believe that we'll see a great difference. It's gonna re it's gonna take the men to come back and see that if they don't do what is uh, expected of them as men, uh, then our world is in trouble. Absolutely, you know, our world is really in trouble. Thank you. Good. Good. Well, we thank you for joining us today, Dr. Gilliard. Uh, again, we will be reaching back out to you because we, we can't put too much of a gap between uh, this discussion that we've had today um, and our discussion that we want to have with you as a follow-up. Again, thank you for joining us today. And uh, we want to, at this time, wrap up and uh, thank everyone for joining us on today. Um, we in invite you and encourage you to join us for future episodes of All Day Edify, the show where our aim is to uplift, inform, and enlighten you. All day, every day. Do you provide human services? Are you an entrepreneur that contributes to society? Do you have access to tools and resources that facilitate growth and development? Come be a guest on our show. You can email us at alldayedify at gmail.com or Send us a message on our Facebook page at All Day Edify. A new TV channel, Sundial Networks, showcasing urban culture, music, lifestyle, fashion, talk shows, comedy, movies, and more. TV lineups, slow jams, game of life, Sundial Soul, live from the smokehouse, the battle, new versus old, 60s and 70s time machine all that jazz and on sunday special programming with religious roots gospel soul r&b classic gospel you can find us on the web and on most smart tvs at www.sundial.tv that's sundial.tv and on roku yes roku free no subscription needed. Search for us under Sundial Networks. That's S-U-N-D-I-A-L Networks. Sundial Networks. Hey, hi, D and Roku fam. It's your girl, no other than, and that's me. I am hosting That's My Jams on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 6 to 7 p.m. and on Saturdays, 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern time. Please join me so we can enjoy these jams together and also follow me on instagram and let me know what jams you may want to see and we might just be able to get those played either way join me no other than i'm looking forward to seeing you omg guess who's the new host for top 10 from the streets yes me check me out tuesdays and thursdays between 8 and 9 and at 7 central on HiD.TV and 
you can also search us under High Dimension Network on Roku. Oh, I'm so excited.